the Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness, grant those you stir to a new sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments, Otherwise, you shall be instantly cast into the white-hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this manner. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white-hot furnace and from your hands, O king, then may he save us. But even if he will not, no, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and then cast them into the white hall. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But, he replied, I see four men, unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar exclaimed, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Glory, Glory and, and praise, praise forever. forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever, and blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim. Praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven. Praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will truly be free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me, because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence, then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, the season of Lent is a particularly good time to think about our attachments, the things in our life that aren't really essential, but that we feel like we can't live without, maybe even without realizing it, because we haven't thought about it before. In our first reading today, we have the story about the three boys and the pagan king who is clearly trying to coerce them to worship a false god and to give up their freedom. Then in the Gospel, Jesus seems to say that in some ways it's possible to have a false god and to be living in slavery to something without even realizing it. It's interesting to notice from the beginning of the Gospel that Jesus is preaching to those Jews who believed in him. He's not talking to the scribes or the Pharisees. But then he says to them, you're trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. You're trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I think it's, it's useful to think about those words for a minute. Are there, there are times in my own heart when uh, I try to drown out or ignore the voice of my conscience or what God might be trying to say to me or ignoring what he maybe wants me to think about? If I were standing face to face with Jesus, what are the things in my life that might make him say, there's no room for me in your heart? Lent is a particularly good time to think about um, these attachments. Uh, I might not be enslaved to a particular thing, or I might not have an addiction to something, but uh, what are the things in my life that I can't live without, or that I would find really difficult to change? It could be sitting down and watching the news or a, t a certain TV show at the same time every day. It could be, you know, pouring the same drink every evening. It could be uh, the time I get up in the morning or my morning routine. Um, so try, try maybe looking at these, these little things in your life and asking yourself, um, is this thing that I do every day, is it something that I freely choose or is it something that I can't live without? Uh, or do I, do I have the freedom to, to give up this thing? Do I have the freedom to offer it up, to make more room for God in my heart? So if you try this, it probably won't be enjoyable in the moment, but I think you'll feel better about it later on, knowing that, you know, I freely chose to, to give this thing up, to make this little sacrifice, to make room in my heart for God, and I did it because I love him.
Together we bring all of our petitions before the God who loves us. We pray especially for all those who are quarantined, especially those who are uh, struggling um, mentally or emotionally during this time. For all of these people, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis and Bishop Ed as they, they strive to, to lead the church in this difficult time, to build us up with their prayers. Um, we, we pray that the Holy Spirit be their strength and their guide in this, this time. We pray, for the, pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all of our healthcare workers, those on the front lines, uh, taking care of those who are suffering at this time. For all of our, our nurses and doctors and those who are taking care of the sick, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for vocations to the priesthood, that God may raise up young men to be fathers and spiritual leaders, uh, to lay down their life for the church, and to, to give themselves to the Lord in this special calling. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray especially at this Mass for all the people of Mater Christi Parish, and we pray for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We place all these intentions in the hands of Our Lady and trusting ourselves to her intercession as we pray in the words of Pope Francis. O Mary, you always shine on our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, help of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need, and we are sure that you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands with praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. For 
receive back, O Lord, these sacrificial offerings, which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You, therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together 
with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. brought us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins.
Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Attend, Almighty God, to the prayers of your people, and as you endow them with confident hope in your compassion, let them feel as ever the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.